everyone, my name is Leanne and today I'm going to be doing the mid-year freak out tag. Now I've done this tag for a couple years in a row and I was tagged this year by Leanne over at Literary Diversions and I will leave her channel linked down below as well as the person who originally created this tag. I've also been tagged in um, Harriet and Dane's mid-year check-in tag some of the questions in these two tags are quite similar so what I've decided to do is that I'm gonna do the mid-year check-in tag in a few months so probably at the end of like September when we're three quarters of the way through the year because even though there are some differences between the questions I do think it would be quite repetitive if I did them like one after the other and maybe by the time we get three quarters of the way through the year there will be some different answers to what my favorite book is and my biggest disappointment and all that kind of stuff so anyways Let's get into those questions. <laughs> so the first question is, what is your favorite book that you've read so far in 2018? And for this, I'm gonna go for Almost Love by Louise O'Neill, but I am very open to this being bumped off the top spot by the time we get to the end of the year. I do love this book. There are quite a few sticky tabs in it. I've done a full review of this book. This book is about a young woman named Sarah who we follow at two different points in her life. Um, one in the now where she is in a relationship with a man named Oshin and we see a lot of difficulties and struggles in those relationships, a lot of um, bad attitudes from Sarah and then we see her in the past when she is working at quite a posh uh, secondary school and she begins a relationship with the father of one of her students. This man is quite well known in the Irish media, he's quite wealthy and there's a huge power imbalance in that relationship. She is completely falling for him but he kind of just sees it as a bit of a hookup. This book felt so real to me and there were so many moments in this book that I recognised from my own life, difficult things I'd gone through. And for me, rereadability is definitely a big factor when choosing a favourite book. And I am going to be doing a video about my top books of the year so far, um, but I would definitely want to reread this one. The next question is, what is the best sequel that you've read so far in 2018? And I don't think I've read all that many sequels but the one that definitely springs to mind is quite a recent read and that is The Girl Who Soared Over Fairyland and Cut the Moon in Two by Catherine M. Valente. I love this series so much, it's such a whimsical, fantastical read um, and it's often compared to um, like a modern Alice in Wonderland and I also think you would really enjoy this book if you like the film Labyrinth that has David Bowie in it. In the first book of this series we follow a girl named September who is whisked off to fairyland. The third book she is very much suffering from withdrawal symptoms from this amazing fantastical place and of course she gets whisked back there again and goes on fantastical adventures. While this is a series of books aimed at like children, I think you get so much out of it as an adult reader. There are so many little nuggets of wisdom in this book. They, this book is like so quotable. Catherine and Valente manages to put things into words that I've never been able to articulate before. It's funny and it's so poignant at moments and I just utterly love this series. I think there are two more books in it and I don't have those books um, but I'm really looking forward to picking them up one day and trying them out. The next question is what is a new release that you haven't got to yet but really want to? And for this I'm gonna say How Do You Like Me Now by Holly Bourne. I've read quite a few of Holly Bourne's books in the past but I haven't read any of her adult fiction. I think this might be her first adult fiction book. She's written a lot of YA before. I believe this book follows a woman around the age of 30 named Tori who seems to have her whole life together you know she's got she's got a boyfriend she's got this amazing writing career but not everything is as perfect as it might seem from the outside I've heard nothing but good things about this book from people that opinions I really trust it has been compared a bit to Bridget Jones which I absolutely love but any book about a woman in or approaching her 30s does get compared to Bridget Jones. And the next question is most anticipated release for the second half of 2018. 
I am really excited about a lot of the poetry that Picador are bringing out in the second half of the year. Kate Tempest has a new collection, Caroline Duffy has a new collection, and so does John Cooper Clarke, who are all amazing poets that really highly influence my own writing. I always think Picador's poetry game is so strong, so I'm really excited to read these collections from poets that I already know that I absolutely love. The next question is what is your biggest disappointment of 2018 so far? And I kept forgetting what I planned to answer for this question. That's how much of a forgettable disappointment this book was. But that is The Couple Next Door, which is a thriller about a couple who go next door to a dinner party, um, leaving their baby in their own house. They plan to check on the baby every 30 minutes. They've got the baby monitor with them. But of course, the baby goes missing. I just found this book so ridiculous. I found the revelation of what has really gone on to be so strange and I don't even know how to describe how ridiculous it is. I also found a lot of the stuff to do with the mother's mental health history to be really troubling. I just, I, I didn't, I didn't like this book and I really thought I would. I really want to start gradually getting into thrillers and this one just completely threw me off. <laughs> Question six is the biggest surprise of 2018 and for this I'm going to go for another recent read and that is A Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. I always thought I was going to like this book but I didn't expect to love it so much. I have been like gradually reading Jane Austen's novels over the past like couple years or so. It wasn't something that I, was a challenge that I um, wanted to do like right away. It was very gradual and very like organic. Um, but I've always like really liked Jane Austen's novels. But this, this is a contender for one of my favorite classics ever. This book is about two sisters, Eleanor and Marianne, and if you were to summarize the plot, you, I guess you would say that it follows their love lives and how they um, deal with different romantic relationships in their lives, but ultimately this is a story about friendship and sisterhood. It's about how no matter what goes on in the romantic lives of the two sisters, they always have each other. There is a third sister named Fanny, but she's entirely irrelevant. The sisters are quite different, and I think at different points in a young woman's life in particular, they will relate to Eleanor or Marianne at different stages. Marianne spends a lot of time crying in her bedroom and I was like, same. I really, really love this book and I didn't anticipate loving it as much as I do. The next question is your favourite new author. So that can be an author you've read for the first time or a debut author. And for this, I'm going to go for Taylor Jenkins Reid. You may have heard this author's name from her most recent novel, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. That book is really blowing up and I've heard nothing but glowing reviews of it. But I haven't actually read that one yet, but I would really like to because, you know, I've heard nothing but good things. It's got really excellent bisexual representation in there, which is something that I really appreciate in literature. But I have actually read another of her books. I read a book called After I Do, which I will talk about later in this video. And I'm halfway through reading another one of her books, which is called In Another Life. I think. On the surface you would probably think that her stories are quite like fluffy romance novels but they have so much depth to them and I've just completely had fallen in love with her writing. I actually do really love a good romance novel but I do struggle to find ones that combine my love for more literary fiction and the fluffy romance and I think she's just a great medium between the two. Basically I just want to read anything that she brings out now. Question eight is your newest fictional crush. Now, when I see people do this tag and they're like, oh, I don't really get crushes on people in books. I'm normally like, what? Cause I definitely do. But this year there hasn't really been one. Um, if I was pushed to give an answer, I would probably go for Oshin from Almost Love until the end. He kind of messes it up at the end. But up until that point, I was like, yeah, I could be into a sheen, but not really that much to be honest. Question nine is your newest favorite character. And I, again, I'm not sure I've got a standout one so far this year, but if I did have to give an answer, I think I would go for Marianne from Sense and Sensibility, just because this has been one of those books that really came to me at an appropriate time. 
Question 10 is a book that made you cry and this is where I'm going to come back to After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, yeah, this book made me cry a lot and I am going to talk about it in my top books of the year video. Spoiler for that, I suppose. But this was a book that came to me at exactly the right time. Um, it is about... It's a book about a married couple who decides that they're going to take a break for a year. It's mainly from the perspective of the woman but we do get glimpses into the man's life. It's about the journey that she goes on in that year, what she learns about relationships, the different approaches to relationships that she sees in the people around her. I feel myself welling up just thinking about this book so I'm gonna move on. Question 11 is a book that made you happy and I'm gonna go for Cheer Up Love by Susan Kalman which is a book about depression um, which may make you wonder why it made me happy but that's kind of Susan's whole approach to her struggles with depression and anxiety. This is a book that I was very kindly given for my birthday back in December and it was such a brilliant choice. This is a book that I definitely need in my life and I'm definitely going to reread. You may know Susan Kalman as a Scottish comedian, you may know her from the most recent series of Strictly Come Dancing and while this is like a personal memoir and you learn a lot of stuff about her life, I think it stands out from a lot of celebrity memoirs in that it's grounded in a particular like subject matter which is her mental health struggles. I've never had my own experiences so validated and it just made me feel so happy that there was someone out there that got it. <laughs> she also has another book coming out later this year, I think in September and that is another very highly anticipated release for me. Question 12 is your favourite book to movie adaptation that you saw this year. I've not seen that many films this year to be honest with you. Um, I did see A Monster Calls um, which is a film based on the Patrick Ness book but I haven't read the book. I really enjoyed the film though, I thought it was really fantastic and really beautifully done. And recently I also re-watched Love Rosie which is based off a Cecilia Ahern novel. But again, I've not read the book. <laughs> so I can't really like compare them in any way. Hey, so editing Leanne here who realized that she completely missed out a question, um, which was the favorite video that you've done so far this year. And there are quite a few videos that I'm actually pretty proud of. My Penguin English Library video, I'm really pleased with. Um, it was like a little bit different to the stuff that I've done before and it's a style of video I would like to make more of in the future. I'm also super proud of the Irish Readathon and all of the videos that I made for that. Um, particularly my big discussion video on Seamus Heaney. Um, I know, I knew that it wasn't going to be a particularly popular video, but it's still a video that I'm super proud of. And just like everything I made for the Irish Readathon, I'm so pleased with. Those two videos in particular I will leave a link down below. Oh and also there are links to all of the books that I mentioned in the description as well. Anyway, back to the normal video. Question 14 is what is the most beautiful book that you have bought or received this year? And purely basing this on aesthetics, there aren't a huge amount of beautiful books that I have acquired over this first half of the year. I think I tend to acquire a lot more like beautiful books um towards the end of the year so when like my birthday and christmas are um but the book i've decided to go for is daniel deronda by george Eliot. obviously i think the penguin english library books are beautiful i mean i go on about them enough but this is one that i've acquired this year that i particularly love the design of and just looking at this book makes me feel so happy and i also think these look like tiny vulvas um which makes me really happy so yeah this one. And the final question, question 15, is what are the books that you need to get to before the end of the year? And I mean like all of them. I, <laughs> I am planning a video where I show you my entire physical TBR, um, but I don't know how long that video is going to take to make. Um, but at the moment there are some books that are very much on my radar which I'm like, if I don't get to these by the end of the year, I'm in trouble. <laughs> so we have Herland by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Beloved by Toni Morrison, The Vegetarian Tigers of Paradise by Crystal Jeans, The Road to Middlemarch by Rebecca Mead, and A Place Called Perfect by Helena Duggan. These are all books that like when I first got them I was super excited to read them and I just haven't got around to it yet and I find that really annoying. <laughs> so I'm going to tag some people. I am going to tag Dave from Wild Reads, I'm going to tag Lindsay from The Wandering Reader, and I am going to tag... and I'm going to tag Olive from A Book Olive. Anyways, that's all I'm going to talk about today. Let me know down below what your favourite read of the year so far is and I will talk to you guys in my next video.